Welcome to the channel my friends, today we're going to be exploring one of my favorite builds in Elden Ring. It is a super destructive one that involves lots and lots of fire and explosions. And my last build video I posted also made use of a lot of fire, but that was a more melee focused build and it involved a lot of stun to breeze through big enemies and bosses. If that's more your style, I'll link that down below for you to watch. So let's get into the build. There will be timestamps down below so you can skip around if you like. I will showcase everything I am making use of and where you can go to pick them up. Don't forget to check the link down below if you're interested in some Elden Ring inspired merchandise. There is no branding or logos or anything so you don't need to worry about that. Thank you very much and let's get into it. <laughs> So let's talk stats. I am sitting at level 400, but I am on my fourth playthrough, so I believe that that is new game plus three, if I am correct. So I do have 60 faith, 60 vigor, 50 mind, and 50 endurance. So with this build, I am essentially level 220, since the other stats are not being used. Although you do need four strength to use the giant seal that I will be making use of, so if you want to get really technical, then I would be level 224 again on my fourth playthrough. Now I assume majority of you are not on your fourth playthrough or higher so you do not need to be this high level. So don't be one of those guys who comments down below any build is OP at level 400 because I see that on every video and that is not how the game works at all. So our weapons of choice are the giant's seals. Obviously a faith weapon and what's special about this one is that it boosts giant flame incantations which we will will be making use of with this build. Now dual wielding two of these will stack that buff to over 40% of a damage increase. As far as I'm aware you do not need to upgrade the one in your offhand to get that buff, but definitely upgrade the one you'll be using to cast your incantations as that will upgrade the damage. Now you can find this seal inside the giant conquering hero's grave. Inside there is a giant room with a troll. You're going to drop down the side of the platform and in the room with a fire pro relic, the seal can be found on a corpse. Now to get a second one, you will need to get it on another playthrough, or you can have someone drop it to you. So you could join my discord and ask in there, there might be someone kind enough to help you out. Now for armor, just use whatever you like. In my opinion, your drip is far more important than your armor's usefulness. If you want some drip recommendations, you could run all the Crucible Knight armor. It looks dope. Doesn't fit the theme, but really, who cares? Now but seriously, there are some more thematic mage fashion sets you could use. So the first one could be the classic, you're just going to use the altered version of the eccentric hood so that the astrologer robe hood goes over the top. Now you can then combine it with the best arms and boots in the entire game, which are also in theme, being the fire prelate gauntlets and fire prelate greaves. Now while that look is good, the look I'll be rolling with is this one. It is the crimson hood on top of an altered drake knight armor to remove the weird dragon stuff and then I also have the Drake Knight gauntlets combined with the Nox Greaves which ties in with the chest really damn well. Now I love this look it's not too crazy but it is very clean creative and it fits the aesthetic of the build in my opinion. Now the important stuff so the talismans I'm rocking with the build are the Phlox Canvas Talisman. This will raise the potency of all incantations by 8%. Now this buff is good but honestly you could probably replace it with something else if it complements your playstyle. If you do want to run it though, then you can get it after killing Millicent and then killing Gowry or by completing Millicent's questline and then slaying Gowry after, that will drop the talisman. Next up, we have one of my all-time favorites, the Godfrey's Icon. Now this talisman raises the attack power of charged spells and skills by 15%. Now this can be obtained after killing Godfrey, the grafted, not Godfrey, Godfrey, the grafted in the Golden Lineage Evergale here on the map. Now the fire scorpion charm, of course we have to fit a scorpion charm into just about every magic build ever. Now this will increase fire damage by 12%. Now you can get this on a wooden platform to the west in Ford Laid inside Mount Gelmir. And lastly another favorite of mine that I put in most of my builds, I've put the ritual sword talisman which raises all attack power by an additional 10% when you have full HP. 
So this is found in the Lux Ruins. You're just going to kill the boss in there and just loot the chest. Now, an honorable mention is, of course, Shabruri's Woe. I feel like I ramble on about this one in most of my build videos. You just want to chuck this on if you're using a Mimic tier and you're going to take it off once you summon it. This will force the boss to focus on your Mimic instead of you, which has nothing to do with the build, but it is too strong for me not to mention. Now, you can find this talisman here on the map. You're just going to pick it up in the crazy village. Again, this is only useful if you're using a Mimic tier. If you're not, definitely don't equip this. That is a bad idea. Now, right before we get into the super fun stuff, let's quickly take a look at the Wondrous Physic. Now, I'm using the Flame Shrouding Cracked tier and the Green Burst Crystal tier for a plus 20% to fire attacks for three minutes and an extra 15 stamina per second for three minutes. So the Flame Shrouding Cracked tier can be found by killing the avatar at the minor Erd Tree in Kaelid right here on the map. And the Green Burst Crystal tier is found by killing another avatar at the minor Erd Tree in Kaelid as well, just here on the map. Now for the fun part, we have the incantations. So to start off, we're going to be taking Flame Grant Me Strength for an extra plus 20% fire damage for 30 seconds. Now this is a game changer as an extra 20% damage on top of what we have already is insane. Now this one can be found behind Fort Gale on a body between two flame chariots. Now combining that with our next incantation, Golden Vow, that 20% increase goes up by an extra 15% for 80 seconds. And we also get a nice 10% damage negation buff as well. Now you get this in a shack on Mount Galmir right around here. Now our first offensive incantation is Burn O Flame. Now this incantation will send flaming pillars up into the air all around you, dealing fire damage for each pillar that hits a target. This means the bigger the enemy, the more damage you will be dealing. This also happens to be your Mimic's favorite incantation, especially if he's running Shabruri's Woe, since the enemy will be on his ass the entire time. Now the incantation is very strong, but since it works in close range, it is very hard to pull off sometimes without being hit by the enemy, so you need to be very careful. It does require 27 faith to cast, and you get this by killing the fire giant and then trading in the remembrance at the round table hold. If you're having trouble fighting the fire giant, I have a couple videos on my channel for you. Go and check them out. Now, Flame of the Fell God. You can pick that up in Leonia of the Lakes by killing the Thief of Fire himself, Aiden. Now, this summons a slow moving fireball with medium range that will explode and set everything on fire. This is super good at comboing with some of the other incantations, and it's really good at initiating a fight. Now, this is the highest level incantation we'll be using as it requires 41 faith. Super strong and probably my second favorite incantation in the entire build. I am saving my favorite for last. So next up, we've got Flame Fall Upon Them. Now, this hurls several balls of fire at once towards the enemy. It can be charged to take advantage of that charged spell buff, and it cannot be dodged by small evasive enemies, which is its primary use. So this thing is super strong and can deal loads of damage to very fat enemies and multiple enemies over a large area. Being able to charge it means you can change the timing of the attack, which can fuck with enemy players in PvP. It does cost 28 faith, but that's not too bad. So to get your hands on this one, you need to get to the top of Guardian's Garrison in the mountaintop of Giants. There is a mini boss in there called the Chief Guardian Argenthi in a tower, and the chest behind him will have the Giant's Prayer Book in it. So you're going to give this book to either Brother Corhin at the Round Table Hold, or you can give it to Pope Turtle, and either of them will sell it to you. Now, the last part of this build and the signature spell that will turn you from a Fire Nation soldier into Fire Lord Ozai himself is the Giant's Flame Take Thee. Handing in the Giant's Prayer Book will also grant you access to this spell, and it is just like the last one, except this one hurls a massive single ball of raging fire. Now, this requires 30 faith and deals a ton of damage. Combine this with the Flame of the Fell God, and you will hit like a truck. Not to mention that your Mimic can use it too. Now, it can be charged to take advantage of the Godfrey's Icon's extra damage, plus charging it also just increases its raw damage anyway. So, I'm not very good at math, but I will try my best. It seems here that two giant seals increase our damage with these incantations by 44%. Adding on the Flock Canvas's Talisman will give us an 
extra 8%. Godfrey's Icon will give us a plus 15% on charged spells, extra 12% from the Fire Scorpion Charm, and lastly, another 10% from the Ritual Sword Talisman, assuming we are at full health, of course. And that's a total of an 89% increase to all damage. Not bad. Now let's add the extra 20% from the Flame Shrouding Crack tier, another 20% from the Flame Grant Me Strength Incantation, and then finally, a plus 15% from Golden Vow on top for a grand total of 144% damage increase to our Fire Incantations, assuming we are at full health and charging the attacks. Now we still get a 129% damage increase on non-charged attacks, which is still stupid crazy. Now we are melting bosses, pun intended, and I'm having a lot of fun along the way. So thank you so much for watching the video. I had a lot of fun putting this together and I think it's going to become maybe a bit more of a regular thing on the channel if you guys enjoy this sort of content. I love making builds because the game allows you to really buff every aspect of this game and make it overpowered. Let me know how you go, what you think. I'm sure I may be messed up somewhere in the build or there is probably something better I could have used instead. So if you have something in mind, please let me know down below. I'm always eager to learn. Big thank you to all of my supporters. I hope you all have an amazing day and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.